In this video, we're going to talk about binary trees. A binary tree is an ordered two airy tree, which means each vertex has at most two children. And the fact that it's ordered says we're going to assign each child a name, the left child and the right child. Now, the binary trees have a nice recursive property. Because the left child of a vertex, in turn, is a root of the left subtree. For example, we have two binary trees. Let's look at the top one. The root is labeled 2. Its left child is labeled 7. Its right child is labeled 5. But 7, in turn, is a root of the left subtree. Seven has a left child labeled two and a right child labeled six. But six, in turn, is a root of the right subtree of seven, which in turn is the root of the left subtree of two. So this is what we mean by the nested recursive structure of a binary tree. Let's look at the larger tree down in the second example. The root is labeled 60. It has a left child labeled 41 and a right child labeled 74. The left child labeled 41, in turn, has a right child labeled 53. So we would say, like we did in the above example, that 53 is the root of the right subtree of 41. And 41 is the root of the left subtree of 60. Notice that we have directed edges in the top example and we don't have any direction assigned in the lower example. Sometimes people put the direction in and sometimes they don't because it's always understood that the direction is down from the root. To make sure that we're following this, let's take another example. How many vertices does the left subtree of the vertex labeled 65 have? So we have to find this vertex labeled 65. If we go to the root, which is labeled 60, it has a right child labeled 74. And 74 has a left child labeled 65. So the question is, how many vertices are in the left subtree of 65? 65's left child is 63, and it has two children, so there are three vertices in the left subtree of 65. How many vertices does the right subtree of the vertex label 53? Recall that the vertex label 53 was the right child of 41. So we're looking at the vertex label 53. And how many vertices does the right subtree of that vertex have? Well, it only has one. And that is 55. Our next example is a complete binary tree. Now, a complete binary tree is a binary tree where each vertex has exactly two children. Now, in a binary tree, you have at most two children, but if it's complete, then every vertex has two children, except, of course, for the leaf nodes. So how many vertices does such a tree have if it's complete? Well, if we start at the top, we always have one root. Notice that since it has exactly two children, then we have two at the first level. And each of those have exactly two. So we have two to the second at the second level and so forth. So, given that there are always two vertices, or two to the one at level one, 
and 2 to the second at level 2. We can generalize this and say that there will always be 2 to the k at level k. In this example, we have level 3. So that gives us a total of 2 plus 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 2 plus 2 to the 3. Notice that we have level 3 because we start counting at level 0. The sum of these powers of 2 is given by a well-known counting argument. In this case, the sum is 2 to the 4 minus 1. The theorem that summarizes this is given in your book as theorem 3.3.1. The complete binary tree of height h has 2 to the h plus 1 minus 1 vertices. Again, it's h plus 1 because we start counting at level 0. Notice that this is for a complete binary tree. If our binary tree is not complete, then we have at most 2 to the h plus 1 minus 1 vertices. Now, in our first example, it was not a complete binary tree. There are missing vertices. For example, if we look at the right child of the root, which is labeled 74, 74 does not have a right child. So an entire right subtree of 74 is missing. How many vertices would we have if this were a complete binary tree? We would have to extend until we have all paths of length 1, 2, 3, 4. So that means we would have 5 levels. So 2 to the 5th minus 1 would be 31. So if this were a complete binary tree, there would be 31 vertices. We only have 14. So almost half of the vertices are missing here. Our last topic is a definition. It's the definition of a binary code. Now, a binary code is an assignment of symbols to a set of binary strings where each binary string receives one of the symbols. For example, suppose we take the alphabet. So we would assign the letter A to one binary string the letter B to another binary string, and so forth. And then each binary string would be referred to as a code word. If we were going to do this and assign a unique binary string to each letter of the alphabet, how long would the binary strings have to be? If they were only of length 3, then there are 8 such binary strings of length 3. And since we have more letters in the alphabet than 8, 3 is not sufficiently long. If the binary strings are length 4, then we could construct 2 to the 4 or 16, and that's still not long enough. If they're length 5, there are 32 unique binary strings, so we would have to use binary strings of length 5 in order to have enough so that each letter of the alphabet can be assigned to a unique binary string. So binary trees are often used to help construct binary codes. We're going to stop here with this definition. Our book goes on to talk about Huffman codes, but we will stop here.